South Dakota Mines is coming off of a strong week where they went up to Spearfish and beat Black Hills State 49-14 to to reclaim the home stake trophy in the Black Hills Brawl. I'm Alex Dodd, and this is the South Dakota Mines football show where I'm joined by head coach of the Hard Rockers, Charlie Floor, and every week for 20 to 30 minutes we'll take you inside the program. Coach, how are you doing this week? Are you still riding on that high? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, doing great. Thanks again, Alex, for everything that you do. Um, yeah, it's, you know, obviously a fun weekend. Uh, you know, very happy for our kids and for our program. And uh, knowing, you know, we've got to turn the page and get ready for a big week this week. So, As you kind of went back and, and watched the film, what was it that stood out to you that kind of made the difference in the game on on Saturday? You know, I think I think probably from our standpoint, uh, we didn't make a lot of mental errors. We still made some mental errors, uh, but you know, I felt our kids were very in tune with what we were wanting to do in all three phases of the game. You know, we made mistakes in all three phases of the game, but you know, we felt from that standpoint, uh, we maybe made a little bit uh, less uh, of, of mistakes um, than than maybe what Black Hills did. So, you know, our, our we felt our kids were really prepared for what we were going to get in all three phases of the game, and our kids went and executed it when they needed to. Kind of seemed like you guys were able to establish your will at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Defensively, you had four sacks. Uh, on offense, you were able to establish the run game. Uh, Ty Harris over 100 yards. Jaden Johansson, he did his thing with 78 yards. Just seemed like the line of scrimmage was really key for you guys on Saturday. What did you notice on on both sides of the ball up front? Yeah, you know, I, I feel our, our kids uh, were, were physical. That's one thing we challenged them, you know, all week long is, you know, it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a, a gritty football game. Uh, we have to show up and, you know, phys- phys- physicality isn't something you can talk about. You know, it's something you have to actually do. Uh, we had a good week of practice, uh, you know, th- that Tuesday. Tuesdays are typically our, our most physical practices. And uh, we really challenged our guys that, you know, this is the one day we're going to be able to be physical in practice. We've got to make the most of it. Uh, we had a good practice on Tuesday when we were doing some of our, you know, different segments and uh, really challenged our guys uh, in all three phases, you know, not necessarily up front, but everybody's got to have to play a physical football game in order for us to get the results we want seems like the the last couple of weeks that you guys have really gained some some momentum and some headway in in this season just clean games on both sides of the ball making plays and and grabbing big victories because of it how important was it uh for your team just to to have two games where they kind of put all the pieces together for for 60 minutes like you've been talking about the last couple of weeks yeah it was huge for us um you know, that, that's one thing, like you mentioned, we've talked a lot about is, you know, after the Colorado Mesa game, we felt we had to kind of get back to ground zero, what our foundation was from a football standpoint with our core values and different things. And, you know, had a great senior leadership meeting after the Colorado Mesa game. And, you know, with the young football team with only seven seniors, you know, how are we going to get across to our, our younger kids that need to show up and, and play in some big football games? You know, what does that look like from our standpoint? And, you know, our, our senior leaders, our leadership council did a really good job of, you know, starting from that first team meeting that Monday before the Highlands game. And, you know, really, these are the things we got to focus on. Had a great week that week. And then, all right, you know, how do we not necessarily reinvent the wheel, but what what are things we can continue to do for the Black Hills game and really focused on those. And then, you know, it was re- really just fun to see the results and the things that we had talked about in previous meetings really correlate to what we needed to do on the field. Seemed like you guys really got up for third and fourth down uh, in the game on both sides of the ball. You guys were were seven of nine on third down in the first half on offense and went four for four on fourth down in the game. Uh, and then on the other side, held them to three of 11 on third and 0 of four on fourth. How big was that just to, to be up for those late downs, uh, for kind of those money downs, uh, a lot of people like to say, and – and making plays when it mattered most. Yeah, those those are critical downs. You know, we we emphasize those a lot in practice. Uh, we talk about them. Uh, the the win the critical downs is always one of our keys to victory. Just knowing offensively, if they stayed on the field, uh, it was going to really you know potentially hurt our chances to win the game because of you know we felt we could move the ball up and down the field offensively. So our defense took a lot of pride into that. And then offensively for us, uh, you know, we know we needed to stay on the field and keep their offense. So you know we. Like you mentioned, we went for it uh, four times on fourth down, just, you know, put ourselves in a situation to, uh, uh, you know, stay on the field. 
you know, and, and our kids bought into, you know, you're going to have to play some extra downs in this football game. And, you know, their teams aren't necessarily going to punt when they get to fourth down. And, you know, very proud of our defense holding them, you know, to uh, zero conversion downs on fourth down. And, and we had some big critical stops, which essentially led to either a field position change or scores on our side of the ball. So, yeah, the critical downs are always huge and they, and they played a huge role in that game last Saturday night. You had a couple other players that that stepped up on offense and made plays for you that that maybe haven't had that kind of game yet this season. Ty Harris, like I mentioned, eight carries for 101 and a touchdown. Uh, Max Hotson, Max Hotson, uh, a great game at receiver, five catches for 72 yards and two scores, uh, and a really big catch in the back of the end zone uh, to kind of get you guys going on offense. How good was it to see those guys step up and kind of have a breakout game? Uh, and and add some more versatility to your offense. Yeah, both of those kids, like you mentioned, have done a really good job of stepping up. You know, uh, Max is a kid that's been in our program. He was actually here right before I got here. So, you know, he was part of the whole transition. Uh, but, you know, he he's one of those kids that doesn't say boo. You know, he shows up every single day. He's got his lunch pail and his hard hat, and he just he goes to work. And from my standpoint, you know, it was really good for him to get the opportunities and then he made the most of them. You know, there's a lot of kids that sometimes don't make the most of the opportunities they're given, but he was able to make the most of the opportunities. And, you know, for him to have two touchdowns uh, in a rivalry game and at some critical points in the game, you know, one was the first score. And then his second one was a score right before halftime to put us up 21 to nothing. So, you know, again, all the hard work that he's been able to do, you know, really paid off and, and was able to show people. And then Ty Harris, again, a steady Eddie type kid, played for us last year as a true freshman. This year, you know, really only a second year player. Um, got some really good vision, got some good wiggle, can do this, a lot of different things for us. And, and for him to have kind of a breakout game, again, just shows the versatility uh, that we have within our offense. And, and we feel confident no matter who we put on the field, we feel confident they're going to go out and make some plays for us. Jaden Johansson obviously has made a lot of plays for you guys over the past couple of years. Uh, on Saturday, 19 of 30 for 237 through the air and three scores. Uh, and then, you know, a big part of the rushing game as well. 12 carries, 78 yards, and two more scores. Uh, and, you know, rightfully so, earns Armac Offensive Player of the Week uh, honors for the fifth time in his career. What does he mean for this football team? And how good does it feel as a coach every time he receives the recognition that uh, he's kind of earned throughout his career there uh, in O'Hara Stadium? Yeah, very proud of Jaden. You know, very felt very strong about his performance. You know, I know that's one thing he he took personal last year. You know, uh, there was some critical turnovers that, you know, he he'll put on him. You know, not anybody else. It, it was on him. He's got to make better decisions and and uh, you know made those better decisions this past Saturday. You know, did a really good job of distributing the ball to a lot of different people. And when things weren't there, we're able to you know make a play with his feet. Uh, you know, he he knows that whatever we ask him to do, he's going to give his best. And, you know, he did very well on the offensive side, rushed the ball very well. And, you know, we put him in a tough spot from a punting standpoint. You know, we had the ball backed up on our own one yard line and, you know, the kid delivered a 73 yard punt and, and really changed the field position side of things. So, you know, uh, all the individual honors, you know, obviously he's earned. Um, he doesn't talk a lot about him. We don't talk a lot about him. He's just willing to do whatever we need or ask him to do, and he's going to do it to the best of his ability. I was going to mention that play as well. Uh, honestly, I think Jaden might have deserved special teams uh, honors this week uh, for some of those punts. Uh, it's not often that you see a, a quarterback step into the position uh, unless you're kind of in a quick kick situation, uh, but to have a quarterback deliver – at that position as much as he has over the past couple of years uh, is has got to get you excited as a coach just to see his versatility as an athlete on the field every week. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, ha having a kid like that back there can really scare a lot of people, uh, you know, because, again, you don't ever know what he's going to do. And, you know, uh, the other thing about it is, you know, punting the uh, ball out of the back of your end zone, that's a high-pressure situation. And, you know, he was able to get off a good punt. You know, our op operation time was really good. Max snapped the ball back there in a timely manner. We had great protection uh, to kind of take a little bit of pressure off of Jaden. Uh, but again, you know, high pressure situation. The kid was able to come through and get a big kick for us to essentially change the field position and push them back a little bit further than uh, they may probably expect it to be. 
And then defensively, uh, another really good game for you guys, uh, which, I mean, that unit's been making plays, it seems like, the whole year. Uh, Casey Knutson and, and Hunter Newsom just kind of anchoring that that unit as veteran players. What did you see from them uh, this past weekend, and how big was it to, to come away with four sacks as a team uh, and really make Black Hill State work behind the sticks? Yeah, both Casey and Hunter, you know, both are captains for the team, you know, uh, both very veteran players, like you had mentioned. Uh, those two kids spend an awful lot of time off the field trying to make sure that we as a defensive unit uh, are cohesive. You know, with Casey essentially controlling the back end and then Hunter, you know, our starting Mike linebacker, but he works a lot with the defensive line and talk about gap control and, you know, making different calls based off of formations and where we should be aligning. So, you know, those two kids are really our quarterbacks uh, on the defensive side, so to speak, and, and try and get our, our players in a position to line up and play fast and, you know, and then the, the defensive line did a phenomenal job of, of adding more pressure uh, than the intended pressure we, we tried to get on their quarterback and, you know, having four sacks in that football game. And, you know, I think it was seven total uh, tackles for loss, you know, really, like you mentioned, kept the, them, uh, you know, behind the sticks, which is again, something we felt, you know, very comfortable with is if we can keep them, you know, out of, or off schedule, um, that was going to be to our benefit. Uh, another big game this weekend, number 15, Western Colorado comes to town. Uh, they're off to a great start to the season and and had a really good showing against Colorado Mesa this weekend, a 43-7 to win. Uh, what have you seen from from Western Colorado on film, uh, and what's it going to kind of take to keep this thing rolling a, against another really good football team? Yeah, Coach Baines has done a phenomenal job down there at Western. You know, he uh, he took over a program that wasn't, you know, probably where it should have been. And, you know, you look at them the last couple of years and, you know, two years ago they were a playoff team. Uh, last year I think they finished second or third in the conference. Um, this year they're 5-0, and oh, you know, have played some very quality teams in their non-conference and then, you know, start off their conference season going and beating Pueblo uh, on the road. Uh, you know, then they played uh, at Chadron and then this past weekend, you know, uh, did a phenomenal job of, you know, executing their game plan against Colorado Mesa team that we lost to early in the year, you know, defensively, you know, they held Colorado Mesa to 53 total yards offensively. They're a, a ball control type team, but with some exceptional skill guys all around the yard that can go around and, and make some plays. And probably the one thing I'm, you know, very impressed with and, and not a lot of people talk about it within just the game in general is they are so special on special teams. I think they've got four or five block punts right now, some, you know, extra uh, blocks on some PATs. Those kids play extremely hard. They're extremely physical. You know, they're they're not the biggest of people, but uh, how hard they play and how physical they play uh, is, is a big staple of who Jazz is and, and who their coaching staff are and what they teach. So, you know, our, our kids know we're going to have to show up and play a complete game. We're going to have to play extremely hard. We're going to have to match their energy. Uh, and we know it's going to be a dogfight. You know, they're the number 15th team in the country for a reason. You know, that's well-deserved. And we know it's going to be a tough game for, for us. Um, but our hope our kids are up to the challenge. Obviously, you guys really pride yourselves on the way that you play on special teams. How important is that aspect of the game to, to protect well in the kicking game and, and also to, to potentially make some plays of your own uh, in a game against a, a team that's coming in with a lot of momentum? Yeah, and we talked about that Monday in our team meeting is, you know, special teams is probably, you know, the one phase we have to win. You know, the other two, if, if we're kind of even, uh, you know, that's fine. You know, we feel we can hopefully, you know, win a few snaps or get it still a few first downs or a couple touchdowns. But the special teams in this football game is going to be mightily important. Uh, they are so good on special teams. We've got a few things that we need to get cleaned up within our our kicking game and in the coverage side of things. And, you know, we really challenged our kids uh, at our meeting on Monday night that that's the one phase of the game. Uh, we can't falter if they win the special team side of things. It's probably going to cost us a football game. So, you know, hopefully that message, you know, will come across strong to everybody involved with our special teams. And it's you're just not a special team player this week. Uh, you're an offense, you're a defense um, if player and special team. So, you know, we have to play well in all three phases of the game this Saturday. There's no doubt. Obviously, special teams has always been a big part of the game of football. But how much bigger of a part do you think it is this season with the new timing rules and and just, you know, you get less possessions in a football game with the way that the clock moves. Uh, so how important is it to execute and make plays in that third phase? 
It's extremely important. You know, like you mentioned with the new clock rules, you know, there were times in football games, uh, you know, I think it was the first and second uh, weeks of the season, we were only getting nine offensive series uh, during the course of the game. So if there's ways we can, uh, you know, maybe continue to gain another possession through a special teams phase with, you know, fakes or different things like that, you try and do that. But, you know, even on the other side, of, you know, is if we can try and not to give the other team more possessions, um, you have to do that. So, you know, field position, making sure that, you know, the other team isn't starting at midfield or getting a kickoff return for a touchdown. You know, th there's a lot of different phases of the game that we have to continue to stay focused on and try and not give the other team a, a little extra edge during the course of the game. As you watch film, what do you kind of see from the, the Mesa offense? Uh, obviously, Drew Nash is having a, a pretty good season at quarterback, completing about 60 percent of his passes. Uh, they've got some backs that can make you pay on the ground. What do you kind of see from that that Mountaineers offense? You know, they're they're very uh, consistent. They're very efficient. You know, they, they do a great job of understanding what their personnel is, understanding what the defense is going to take, you know, is essentially going to give them, uh, you know, they're, they're going to take their chances when they feel the chances are there. Uh, but they're very consistent. They're very efficient, you know, in the run game and in the pass game. Um, you know, they're, they're going to make you pay if you do, you know, have a bust, you know, within a coverage or within a blitz and you're not covering down right. And, you know, uh, Coach McCain, their offensive coordinator, does a really good job of making sure their kids understand the schemes, um, making sure that they're ready to go, you know, for for the game. And, and that's the one thing I've been, really been impressed with is just how efficient they are. Uh, within their offensive side. And then defensively, this is a team that, you know, they've only allowed nine or, yeah, nine red zone uh, drives this year. Uh, they have 14 sacks for a loss of 100 yards. Uh, where do you kind of see a, a room to, to make plays against this defense and what's it going to take to, to kind of set the tone uh, offensively on Saturday? Yeah, one, I feel we've got to be able to protect the passer. Uh, you know, Coach Hour, I've known Coach Hour for a long period of time. He was the defensive coordinator at Shadron uh, when I was at Northwest Missouri. So, you know, him and I, we've gone back for, you know, many, many years and not trying to age him or myself, but uh, <laughs> he does a phenomenal job with his defense. You know, probably, you know, one of the, the toughest defenses to get ready for uh, in a short period of time. You know, we only get really three or four days to get ready for, you know, his style of defense. So we've got to be locked in. We've got to play assignment style football. We've got to know, you know, kind of who their playmakers are on defense. You know, they have a, a defensive lineman, number 97. That was the defensive player of the week this past week that had a, uh, a lot of tackle for losses against Colorado Mesa. Uh, they do a lot of different things that can cause you some trouble. So our kids have to be locked in, you know, from the word go in regards to, you know, what they're doing, the different things that they're going to present to you. Uh, we have to be, make plays when the opportunities are given to us, uh, make the most of every opportunity we can get. We have to convert the third downs, which, again, I feel will be huge to keep their offense off the field because they are so efficient um, and make the plays when we need to. So, you know, again, it's going to be a big test for us offensively, knowing the caliber of defense that Coach Hour is going to present for us. What are some keys to the game on Saturday uh, for you guys that you feel like, hey, if we accomplish these things, we're going to be in a, a good position to uh, to pull off the upset and get a, a ranked win at home? We got to continue to take care of us. You know, I think our kids have really bought into that is, you know, we feel we're a good football team and, and we've got to continue to focus on the things that we can control, our attitude, our effort, how we prepare every single week. And, and, you know, make sure we're putting our best uh, performance, best foot forward. Uh, we have to take care of the football. Again, you know, you go back in the game we lost a couple of years ago. It, you know, we turned the ball over quite a bit this past season when we went down there and beat them. We were very efficient with the football. So we've got to, you know, take care of the football. Uh, we got to make the plays we need to. And then, you know, from a defensive perspective, uh, we have to create this, those turnovers because, again, they're, they're so efficient in what they do. Uh, so if, if there's a ball on the ground or a ball in the air that we can go get, we have to be opportunistic and go get those things. And, and like I mentioned before, is we have to win the special teams battle. Uh, you know, they're so efficient. They, those kids play so hard. We need to be, you know, protect on a punt, you know, make sure we're covering down on a kickoff. And if we do get an opportunity for a punt, off, a punt return or a kickoff return to, you know, get some extra yardage, 
we we have to take you know advantage of those uh, hidden those hidden yards during the course of the game. So, you know, extremely proud of our kids and, and how they've prepared up to this point. But no, it's going to be you know a tough battle for us, and uh, we've got to make sure we're ready to go Saturday at noon. This past weekend, you guys had a, a great fan turnout, a, a great student turnout up in Spearfish. How much would it help in a, a big game against a ranked team to have a, another sizable crowd uh, at home to, to kind of create a hostile environment for this team? Yeah, you know, and I, just to go back on that comment, Alex, you know, I can't thank our our student body, uh, Hard Rocker Nation, everybody affiliated with our program. Uh, there was a lot of people uh, in in Spearfish, and I can't thank those people enough for making that. It was it was awesome. Uh, I've never talked in front of a student crowd before on the field, so for our <laughs> students to come down and and enjoy that experience for us was great. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to take everybody. You know, everybody that shows up to our football game on Saturday, it's going to take everybody in involved uh you know so again really challenge our student body really challenge you know our faculty and staff everybody involved with our university as well as you know rapid city the alumni if you get the opportunity to come out uh you're going to see a great football game uh western colorado is a top 15 team we don't get a lot of those teams that show up in our in our stadium and uh if we can get you know a bunch of people out to our game it's definitely going to help us out well coach i appreciate you joining me and Appreciate all of you Hard Rocker fans for tuning into the show. Uh, for head coach of the Hard Rockers, Charlie Floor, I'm Alex Dodd. Thank you for tuning in to the South Dakota Mines football show, and we'll be back next week.